Are you looking for the 10 best suburbs in St. Louis for families? If so, stick around because that's what we're gonna talk about right now. If you're getting ready to move your family to St. Louis, Missouri, but aren't really sure like what suburbs are gonna be the best fit for you, we're gonna talk about the top 10 best suburbs for families in St. Louis according to niche.com. So I got this list off of a website called niche.com or niche.com, I'm not sure. What do you, do you say niche or niche? Niche always kind of sounds pretentious to me, so I usually say niche, um, but I don't know. So let me know in the comments, what do you say, niche or niche? Anyway, we're gonna talk about the 10 best suburbs in St. Louis for families according to niche.com. So my name is Kevin Dewey, I'm a realtor here in St. Louis, Missouri, and I specialize in helping families just like yours relocate from around the country to move right here to St. Louis, Missouri. So if you're looking to learn more about St. Louis, Missouri, different neighborhoods, different suburbs, what are gonna be the best fit for your family, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I've got a ton of different videos that are gonna help you learn different areas, different parts of St. Louis, and you're gonna help, you're gonna learn just like what's gonna be the best vibe, what's gonna be the best fit for your family. Then if you see a neighborhood or suburb that you think you might want to learn more about, make sure you reach out to me and give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I would love to help you learn more about specific neighborhoods and areas and also learn more about your family so I can help you determine if a certain area or neighborhood is going to be a good fit for your family or not. All right, so now let's get into these 10 suburbs that niche.com ranked as the top 10 best suburbs for families in St. Louis. We're going to hop over to Google Maps. That way I can kind of show you where each suburb and neighborhood is in accordance to like, you know, the St. Louis County area. Um, and also we're going to dive into the, the different areas so you can kind of see the different restaurants and shopping, that kind of stuff, different amenities in each, each of these uh, suburbs. Also, we're going to go into like street view so you can kind of see some of the neighborhoods, um, you know, some of the houses, that kind of stuff. Um, so let's go hop over into Google Maps right now. All right, so here we are in the map, and we're going to take a look at number 10 on the 10 best suburbs for families in St. Louis, according to niche.com's rankings. And again, I'll put the description or the, I'll put the link to this article in the description uh, below here. And so number 10 on their list is Webster Groves. And Webster Groves has a population of just over, or just under 23,000 people, 22,951 uh, to be exact. And Webster has a great small town feel. Um, it's very centrally located, as you can see here on on this map and um, it's you know they've got actually two areas of like two downtown areas so if we take it back from uh, go to google maps here and i'm going to show you kind of like where like the outline of webster groves is and according to the st louis county region and so if you zoom in here you're going to see that highway 44 goes right through the middle of webster groves that's going to be the main like access point uh, to webster groves and webster is a really cool spot because it has so on East Lockwood here, so this is what's called Old Town Webster Groves or Old Webster. And you're gonna see that there's a lot of different, let me click on the yeah, satellite view here. So there's a lot of different restaurants. Olive and Oak is a, like a, just a really, really highly rated. Um, they've been written up in like worldwide publications. It's like legitimately like been ranked um, as one of the top, top restaurants in, in the world. Um, and it's right here in the, in the middle of downtown Webster Groves. And so I'm going to show you when I say like they have two downtown areas, I'll show you what I mean. So like you can see this, this area here. Let me, let me drop you into the, the map. I'll drop you right in front of Olive Oak here. And so like this is like the feel of the of downtown like Old Webster here. So here's Olive and Oak right there. And they've just got, you know, like restaurants and shopping all up and down the street it's a really cool spot and like you know all the you know neighborhoods back behind each one of these uh storefronts go down the street there into the neighborhoods and it's uh it's a it's a great it's a great family friendly place to live and i'm going to take you over to also let's go check out the second what i consider to be the second downtown area and as you come down Lockwood here and you meet Big, ben, Big Bend, you're going to see like there's different like Cyrano's here and there's Weber's Front Row, which is a favorite spot of my wife and I. So my wife and I, my wife and I went to Webster University, which is right down um, Lockwood here. And uh, so Weber's Front Row was a big hangout for us. It's a great uh, sports bar, um, fun place to go. And it was kind of cool. Like they expanded the restaurant when right when we were graduating college and um, kind of like when we started having our family and having our kids and like, when they expanded, they became like much more family friendly. Like they, the the second side that they opened was like way more family friendly and stuff. So it was kind of cool. They kind of they kind of grew with our family. Um, so it's Weber's just kind of has a special like place in our heart, you know. 
And uh, so, yeah, so this is the other downtown area. So let me drop you in here real quick so you can kind of get a feel for it. It was just glitching big time before. So it was like pulling me into stores when I was trying to look around. So it's kind of kind of weird. Hopefully it doesn't do that again. But you can kind of see like, you know, all the storefronts and restaurant fronts and everything. Um, it's a it's a really cool, really fun place to live. And, and you know, right right behind all of these uh, businesses and everything, if you just go down the street, you're immediately right into some neighborhoods and just beautiful, nice classic architectural homes, um, big, mature, full growth, you know, trees. Webster's known for like their, um, you know, houses with the big wraparound front porches. You're gonna see a lot of big, you know, houses with, with nice big front porches that you can just hang out on. Um, the tree line streets are really like what kind of stick out to me when you when you go through Webster. It has a, a feel unlike any other area, except for like Kirkwood. Kirkwood has a similar feel, which is really, it's like, it's the neighboring community, really. Um, we just have all these large, you know, trees and everything. Um, it's a great, uh, great feel for the, for the neighborhood. My buddy Andy actually lives right there in that house. <laughs> So this is a spot here that's right between the two downtown areas. So just thought I'd take you back into another neighborhood so you can get a feel for Webster Groves and the houses and everything that are in there. All right, now we're just in the neighborhood. So we're on Orchard Avenue and Spencer and Webster Groves. And again, with the just massive trees all along Webster. And so I always kind of joke, like either, you, I hope you like raking leaves or, uh, you know, you, you know, a good landscaper that they can do it for you. Cause in the fall and Webster, I mean, you're going to be over overrun with, with leaves because of all these beautiful trees that provide all the great shade and stuff in the spring and summer. But in the fall, it's uh it's another story leaves are everywhere. Now let's get to number nine on the list for the 10 best suburbs for families in St. Louis. Number nine is Warson Woods. And Warson Woods is, an, is a very small population. They only have 2,046 residents there and it's only actually 0.58 square miles. Um, so I'm not even really sure, like they've got a couple, niche.com has a couple of uh, suburbs and neighborhoods on this list that are, that are super small um, communities and really they could be lumped into a few other ones. I mean, this is basically like Warson Woods is basically like it's right next to Kirkwood, right next to Webster. It's it's this whole area he, area here basically has like the same like very similar feel. Um, and like Warson Woods is so small, it's like really like it's they're part of the Kirkwood School District. I really consider Warson Woods part of Kirkwood. Um, and but you know, that's they kind of they kind of talk about it uh, as being one of the top suburbs. I really think of it more of like a, a subdivision or like a you know a neighborhood. Um, yeah, because it's, it's really small. Um, and Kirkwood is ranked number 15 for some reason, like in Webster is right here in 10th. So I'm not sure why Kirkwood got a lower ranking because they had the, the same scores for, for schools and everything. And Kirkwood has a population of 27,708. Um, but yeah, so let's let's dive into Warson Woods real quick. I'll show you a different style of homes. All right, so here is Warson Woods. See the outline there? It's really, really small. Um, like I said, I just kind of consider it part of Kirkwood, um, but it's it's, it's basically like, you know, three or four different streets and subdivisions that go back in there. Um, but uh, let's, let's take a look. It does have a different, different feel for it, like the streets and everything, the architecture of the houses, that type of thing. So let's drop you right in the middle of a Warson Woods neighborhood. And so it's got a lot of trees and everything as well, but like the, the style of house, the style of homes are, are different than um, Kirkwood and Webster, like just kind of more, they don't have like the, the big like front porches like you see in, in Kirkwood and Webster. Um, just more like, I guess, traditional style houses, a lot of ranch homes in here too. And you don't see as many ranch style houses in Kirkwood and Webster. And so I, I guess, you know, the, the neighborhood definitely has a different feel um, than like the Webster and Kirkwood streets and neighborhoods. So I guess I can see what they mean as far as like, you know, having it be a, a different, a different suburb, but, uh, and it's you know very very nice family friendly very nice areas neighborhoods as you can see um, you know good stuff here 
but like as far as like having their own you know downtown area or like restaurants and everything like you're going to Kirkwood you're going to Webster for those type of things if you're living in Warson Woods for the most part or even up to De Pere uh, which is just just to the west of Kirkwood So yeah, you can kind of get a feel for it. You know, like, like I said, a lot of ranch style homes, big mature trees, older homes, um, you know, nice looking neighborhoods, no sidewalks. That's kind of a bummer if you ask me. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood similar to this where there's no sidewalks and it always bummed me out when I was a kid. I was, I was, I was jealous of my friends that had neighborhoods with sidewalks for some reason. So that always stands out to me. You know, riding your bike as a kid and stuff, it just always felt safer on sidewalks. But yeah, nice, peaceful looking neighborhood in Warson Woods here. So let's hop over to number eight on the list. Number eight is Chesterfield. And Chesterfield sits out here in the western part of St. Louis County. Um, you're along Highway 64 right here, and you're going to take that west out west to get to Chesterfield. Chesterfield, um, it's a mix of kind of older and newer homes. There's still a lot of new uh, new construction going on in Chesterfield, but there's also a lot of established older neighborhoods um, as well. And so there's a lot of great restaurants. Let's dive into Google Maps real quick. All right, so you can see here's Chesterfield, uh, much, much larger than Warson Woods, <laughs> obviously. And, uh, you know, th this is kind of like what I like to think of whenever I think of like, you know, areas and suburbs and, and that kind of stuff. Like if you're going to rank a whole area, like don't include like little neighborhoods of, of an area, like a, Get, get, get a bigger picture. So like the population of um, Chesterfield was nearly 50,000 people. Actually, um, the latest census was 49,999. So one more person and they'd, they'd be at 50,000. Go to the satellite view here. And so, yeah, so basically you're gonna take Highway 64 um, into Chesterfield and Chesterfield, one of the main roads and the thoroughfares of Chesterfield is uh, Clarkson road right here and Clarkson, you're gonna find a ton of restaurants, ton of shopping, all that kind of good stuff. And then if you would stay on Highway 64, you're gonna come over this way and you're gonna find, you're gonna pass uh, Top Golf. There's a cool Top Golf here. My family loves going to Top Golf. Been there a few different times for different uh, family parties and events and stuff. And then all along here, this is called Boone's Crossing um, down here in this, this stretch here. And you're gonna see like all these different, I mean, this is pretty much everything you're ever gonna need. There's Home Depot, there's Lowe's, there's Dick's Sporting Goods, Old Navy, Target, Walmart, Best Buy. I mean, you name it, you're gonna you're gonna find it along here in Boone's Crossing, um, right here in Chesterfield in the Chesterfield Commons. And then just across the highway, um, there's also Chesterfield Outlet Malls. These are brand new outlets within the next, last like you know 10 years or so. And uh, there's a main event there where they've got like bowling and the different kind of fun activities. And if you keep going along Highway 64, there's another outlet mall over here as well. It's in those premium outlets. So there's two different sets of outlet malls here in Chesterfield. So there's tons of great shopping and there's a really nice sports complex here. My kids have played a lot of different baseball tournaments um, here over the years. Uh, a lot of great, great soccer fields over here. Um, just really nice Chesterfield athletic complex over here for baseball and softball and soccer. And then we spend a lot of time here as well, the Maryville University Hockey Center. It's a brand new two-sheet hockey rink here, state-of-the-art facility, beautiful place. Um, yeah, we're a hockey family, so we spend we spend a lot of time uh, at that rink. Then you've got Spirit of St. Louis Airport for, it's a smaller airport. It's not like a, your Lambert, Lambert Field, you know, international uh, airport. Uh, so this is not the main St. Louis airport. Spirit of St. Louis is for smaller, you know, private flights, um, things like that. So you see a lot of, you know, Cessnas and smaller um, aircraft coming out of uh, Spirit of St. Louis airport here. Let's dive into, actually, I'm going to show you real quick. There's a really cool uh, amphitheater. So Chesterfield Amphitheater, that's a cool spot. Like they, you know, put on concerts and different events here. Um, and Ch Chesterfield Amphitheater. And the one kind of bummer about Chesterfield, and it's not even like a bad thing about Chesterfield, just kind of the state of our world today, but Chesterfield Mall is right here, right at the corner of Clarkson and Highway uh, 64. And the mall is pretty much non-existent now. It used to be it used to be one of the best malls 
in St. Louis, in the St. Louis area. And it's just, there's just not much left there. And uh, so I, I've heard that, that there's plans for redevelopment of, of the area where the Chesterfield Mall is, but um, I, I don't think there's anything concrete there yet, but it, it's something that needs to happen because it's just, it's just like a, a ghost town um, in there. So just kind of a bummer. And like, you know, that's just kind of the state of the world, you know, these days, like every town, every, every area that has uh, a number of different malls, they're not all going to survive just because of, you know, the way things are with Amazon and people buying online and people, people just don't go to the stores as much anymore. So that's, you know, not, not a re reflection on Chesterfield at all. Um, just a reflection of the state of the world. And one of the, another cool attraction in, in Chesterfield is the butterfly house. This is a really neat place. If you've got young kids, um, to come, you can just walk through uh, the butterfly house at this park, and um, that is, there's literally butterflies flying everywhere in this atrium um, here. It's it's a really really fun, cool experience um, to do with your kids. And Chesterfield just a, it's a super family friendly area. A lot of different parks, a lot of different walking trails. Um, there's a walking trail and biking trail that goes along the Missouri River right here. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a great place to go or to, to live uh, with, the, with your family. So I can definitely see why niche.com listed Chesterfield as one of the top areas to raise a family in St. Louis. And let's, let's jump into, I'll take you into a neighborhood. I haven't done that yet. Just so you can get a feel for the area. I'm just gonna drop you in here. And so, yeah, like I said, a lot of, Older, older homes in some, some of the neighborhoods. This neighborhood obviously is ranch style homes. Smaller, like, you know, three, two, three, four bedroom ranch style houses in this neighborhood. I love Wild Horse Creek Road. It's a lot of nice neighborhoods live off of there. And so that's Wild Horse Creek Road. So you've got, you know, Chesterfield has some areas where it feels, you know, a little, a little bit country. Um, there's some undeveloped spots in Chesterfield still. And so let's try and get into this neighborhood here. Yeah. So here's a, a newer, you know, newer subdivision that you're going to find in Chesterfield. A lot of, a lot of Chesterfield neighborhoods feel similar to this one. Uh, we're nice, you know, bigger, larger homes. Larger lots too. So you're going to find like in Chesterfield, a lot of these neighborhoods, they did a really good job of not packing the houses right on top of each other quite as much. Um, you know, there's a little bit, a little bit more space um, between you and your neighbor. So you've got decent sized yards. A lot of the yards in the back are, are larger size yards as well. And uh, yeah, just a nice neighborhood here. All right, so number seven, the number seven best suburb in St. Louis for families, according to niche.com is Glendale. And Glendale is gonna be right here, right next to uh, Webster Groves and Warson Woods. And so this is another thing that I think is kind of silly. Like they've got, like this is all the same area, if you ask me, it's all like Webster and Kirkwood area. And, uh, but they're they're dividing up Warson Woods and. Um, Glendale into its own own thing, and so I'll show you real quick again on Google Maps. Like, look at how look at how small look at how small Glendale is. Five thousand eight hundred ninety one population, so a little bit more population than um, Warson Woods. But again, it's like you know one or two main cross streets with a few different neighborhoods and subdivisions back in there. Um, and so, like, really, I, I really consider Glendale to be. Like a part of Webster and Kirkwood. It's like right, in, it's like sandwich right in between Webster Groves and Kirkwood, uh, Missouri. And, uh, but it's like Glendale is constantly on their list of the top neighborhoods for families in St. Louis. So there must be something to it. And so, um, you know, you're going to see a lot of, a lot of what you see here in, in, in Glendale is you're going to see a lot of 
older older homes, smaller older homes that are being bought and knocked down, with uh, brand new ones being uh, being put up in, in their place. A custom, you know, new custom homes being put up. So let's just drop you right on the side road here. And you're gonna find also a, a feel of you know a similar feel of Webster and Kirkwood, where it's you know larger trees. You're gonna have you know some of the bigger front porches, that kind of stuff. And so. See, like this, these are like the smaller older homes that I'm talking about. So you're gonna see, see like a lot of those are being bought and then built on. People are knocking those down, building on those lots. Um, in, in a lot of cases, you're seeing that more and more here in Glendale. It, it is a great spot, you know, like as far as the houses and neighborhoods and everything, but it's 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 just it's Webster and Kirkwood, if you ask me. <laughs> I don't get it. So, like here's an example. Like, you know, this is obviously a newer style house here. So there's probably like an older home, you know, like this one or like the ones we just saw where people came in, tore those down and built these newer, because these are you know, definitely newer um, build houses. You can tell just by the style of them. Um, and so like, then you'd also have like the big front porches again, like I said, this actually looks like a newer construction house too, that, that what they kept like the classical architecture, you know, of the area with the nice big front porch. So again, you're gonna have the older big growth trees Kind of a mix of single story ranch houses with you know craftsman style type houses too. I love craftsman style houses. Those are, it's probably my favorite design. Craftsman and like the new like farmhouse, farm style, uh, modern farmhouse design houses. Those are probably my two favorite style houses. But you're gonna have a mixture of old and new here in Glendale. See? These areas need need sidewalks, man. That's what's a pet peeve of mine. Poor mom's out here walking her baby, and there's no sidewalk. But luckily, the, the these streets aren't too busy. But that's probably why they don't have sidewalks. But I'd still prefer sidewalks. That's just me. All right, so that's a good feel for Glendale. Number six on the list is Frontenac. So Frontenac Frontenac is going to be one of your more upscale locations, upscale suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri. Whenever you hear Frontenac around St. Louis, you think of you know class, upper class, um, you know luxury, that type of stuff. Um, it's a very upscale luxury neighborhood. So Frontenac's got a very central location that sits along Highway 64 here, um, just to the east of Chesterfield that we just saw on the list there, and just to the west of um, Webster Groves and Kirkwood. So in Frontenac, you're going to find Plaza Frontenac, which has a lot of great shopping, a lot of nice restaurants in Plaza Frontenac. It's going to be your you know, more upscale, your most upscale uh, shopping area of St. Louis. Got your Louis Vuitton store in there. You know, you're going to have uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. They've got uh, you know, Lululemon in there. It's, it's you know, just a great place to go shopping for more upscale um, type of retailers. are going to be there in Plaza Frontenac. Again, like great restaurants and everything, too. And you've got the Hilton Frontenac right there at the corner of Limburg and Highway 64. Uh, some great restaurants along Clayton Road here. And then these subdivisions back here in, in Frontenac, you're gonna find just you're gonna find a lot of multi-million dollar uh, homes, really nice upscale subdivisions. Let's see if we can drop you in. Yeah, see, I mean, you know, you know they're nice subdivisions and nice areas when Google Maps doesn't even let you get in there to, to get to them. So those are probably gated communities where the, the Google map car wasn't able to, to get in, but let's go see what we can check out here. All right, so very nice neighborhoods here. Kind of a mixture of, oh, give me around there, ranch style and you know two-story homes large lots, large yards. Something you're gonna notice for sure in Frontenac, you know, a lot more privacy, just expansive front yards, backyards. Nice mature trees. I mean, like, look at the size of the lots on these houses. Like they're so spread out and far apart. It's pretty awesome. But again, man, they don't have sidewalks either. Come on, Frontenac, you guys can afford sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice neighborhood, a lot of brick homes, a lot of 
you know, homes are siding. So kind of a mixture. Every every house kind of you know looks different. You can tell it wasn't just like one main builder that came in throughout the neighborhood suburb. Pop out from another neighborhood. Start at the end of this cul-de-sac here. Just the land that these houses are on itself, like the lots themselves are worth a lot of money. Look at this quiet street. I mean, it's like a single lane coming out here to Geyer. Steeplechase lane. Check out Countryside Lane here in Front Neck. Nice, big, beautiful homes. Again, larger, big lots. Basketball player's dream right there. Nice, big driveway, flat driveway, with a nice hoop on there. And just even in Google Maps, like this neighborhood just feels so quiet. <laughs> nice and peaceful. Just every house you're it's nice not being right on top of your neighbors. Like I love I love my neighbors and love having neighbors, but it'd be nice to not be right on top of people either. So just like this. That's house just kind of sits off on its own. You can hang out in your backyard. Some privacy. So we might be doing some construction down here. Yeah, it looks like we've got a brand new build going in here. So I bet what happened here is that there was an older, older house that they, and that's probably the same thing that happened here. That's definitely newer. Um, you know, probably an older style house, maybe similar to this one that uh, somebody came in, bought, and now they're, they tore it down. Now they're building their own custom, custom house in a very desirable location. Nice big lot. That's what you're seeing more and more in a lot of these neighborhoods, that just the location is outstanding, but maybe the house that is for sale on the, on the large lot isn't the best house. It's super outdated, super small. Um, you know, so it's just the, the way to go is to buy it, knock it down and build a brand new custom house in a perfect location for your family. All right. So number five on the list of the top 10 suburbs for families in St. Louis, according to niche.com is Olivet, Olivet, Missouri. And Olivet is going to be right here, just to the north of Ladue. And we'll get to that in a little bit too. So mostly older homes you're going to find in Olivet, you're going to see uh, again, like all of that is going to be, you're going to find a lot of like teardowns. Here's a look in Google Maps. You're going to find a lot of, you know, older homes that are being torn down uh, for newer construction, newer, you know, uh, custom homes. And so Olive Road is going to go directly down the center of kind of divide Olivet right in half. And so you're going to have Dealman Road and Olive Road just going straight down the center of kind of like making a plus or an X right in between Olivet there. And so a lot of the, a lot of your shopping, a lot of your restaurants and stuff, you're going to find along Olive Boulevard here. And it kind of sets alongside of Highway 170, uh, which goes north to south throughout the St. Louis area. But Olivet is super centrally located in the St. Louis area, you can see there. And uh, so yeah, so let's, let's jump down in here and check out, check out some neighborhoods within Olivet. So here's a look at Olive Boulevard. And here's a plaza here that's going to have a lot of different shopping and restaurants and everything in there. Sugar Fire is a great uh, barbecue place. You got your Starbucks and Jimmy John's, Honey Bake, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a, a nice spot to visit when you're living in Olivet. Turn down Dealman here.
So on all of that, you're going to find neighborhoods that are have a lot of like older ranch style homes like this. A lot of them have bigger yard sizes as well. And so what you're going to find is that, again, desirable area, very central location. Um, people are going to come in and they're going to they're, they've been buying these like, you know, smaller, outdated ranch style homes, building newer, bigger, larger homes on the nice big lots um, in their place. So you're just finding that more and more and more around here, just because, you know, obviously neighborhoods that are established, there's not any new construction in, in that area. Once the houses are built, they're built, um, but the area still is a awesome location. Um, you know, central location, very convenient to everything else in the St. Louis area. And so it just makes sense. You know, if you're going to come in, if you're going to want to build a, a custom home anyway, and if you're going to want to build a house somewhere, why not have it in the perfect location that you want? You just have to have that extra expense of buying an existing home and demolishing it, putting up a brand new one. So again, you could tell this is an established neighborhood, you know, these older, smaller homes, but like when you go down this way, it's like it's a brand new subdivision because obviously people bought those houses, knocked them down, and they're building these brand new custom homes. So the people in these, you know, smaller, older homes probably loving this if they're not planning on moving anywhere because obviously these houses are raising the property value in there on their street. I mean, you got, you know, nice custom, probably, you know, four four bedroom house there and probably a, a two bedroom house right here right next to it you know I mean it's like this is kind of a, a crazy feel because you've got it, it feels like it's a new construction neighborhood with all the construction going on but then you've got these older houses you know the people that are like nope I'm not going anywhere I'm, <laughs> I'm staying put yeah what a what a diverse mixed bag you got here in this neighborhood smaller bungalow style houses and then all of a sudden you know big four or five bedroom homes that are being built right next to it and that's happening over here too you can tell these are newer and these are older another one lot leveled getting ready prepping for construction yeah kind of crazy it makes sense though i mean olivet is a great location in St. Louis and you know if you don't want these older homes it makes total sense. All right so this brings us to number four on the list of the 10 best suburbs for families to live in St. Louis according to niche.com and that is Wildwood, Missouri. So Wildwood sits out to the far west part of St. Louis County and in Wildwood you're going to have I, I, I'm a real big fan of Wildwood it has a real like kind of a countryside feel to it um, there's a lot of different, like, especially like Highway 109 that runs um, from the north to the south through Wildwood, kind of through the center of it. Um, you're going to, it has like a really nice, like, country road feel to it that goes through some wooded areas, um, some winding, you know, parts of it that kind of open up into valleys. And um, it's, it's just a really cool part of St. Louis County. And you're going to find, it's not uncommon at all to find like a lot of homes with uh, some good acreage on it. Um, you're going to find a lot of different, like, horse, horse properties. Um, out there. Um, so it's not uncommon at all. Like my daughter is a big horse fan. So, so she loves driving through uh, Wildwood and seeing some of the horse properties out there. Um, it's really, really cool. And so like 109 here and um, and Manchester Road 100, Highway 100 right here, kind of make a, a crisscross pattern, like right through the center of Wildwood. And then you're going to have Highway 44 here also. So pretty much Highway 44 to 109 and then Manchester Road or Highway 100, whatever you want to call it. Um, those are going to be like your main thoroughfares to get through into uh, Wildwood. There's some great parks in, in Wildwood. So Bedford State Park is a great park. Um, also the Rockwoods Reservation here. Um, it, it's just a lot of, a lot of really nice hiking. Uh, we also have uh, Hidden Valley Ski Resort here. So in the wintertime, Hidden Valley is a really fun, uh, cool place to go. It's like, you know, it's the closest we get in St. Louis, in the St. Louis area to, uh, to skiing and snowboarding and stuff. So it's, you know, and people from, 
Colorado or like you know, Wisconsin and that kind of stuff where you actually have like legit, you know, um, ski areas and stuff or Utah, or whatever. Um, they would come here and they would call these hills, <laughs> you know, they're, they're really big hills. Um, but here, you know, in St. Louis are about as close as we get to the mountains. Um, and so, but it, it's a fun, like, you know, they make, like, they make their own snow. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't get a ton of snow here in St. Louis, but they make their own snow. So it stays cold enough for a lot of the winter um, here where they can, you know, be open pretty much a good, good stretch of the, you know, from like about December through uh, February. Um, they usually have a really good run and they've got, you know, some fun uh, skiing, snowboarding, and that kind of stuff, and like tubing, uh, that kind of fun stuff in the snow out here at Hidden Valley. And that's right, right in uh, the heart of Wildwood out here. So let me flip to the satellite view and you'll kind of see like how wooded, when I say like, you know, 109 goes through like some wooded areas, like you can just see it. This is all like dense, you know, trees and forest population and stuff. And you can see like how spread out a lot of these properties are like, you know, you're going to get nice really good sized lots where you know you've got you've got neighbors like in this community here you've got neighbors but they're pretty far away you know you're gonna you're gonna have to i bet these are probably you know golf cart you know communities where they got golf carts if you want to go to your neighbors you know hop in the golf cart and drive down the drive down the street so a lot of a lot of like you know private they have a very private feel to them as well because of the wooded nature of a lot of the lots and so you know you're going to be um you know in your property and you're going to have back up to woods in most cases, a lot of times, and you're gonna just have a ton of privacy. So pretty much, you know, when you're sitting in your backyard on your back deck in these, in these houses, you're gonna feel like, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere and there's not a soul around just because of the, the privacy that all the, the woods and the trees and everything um, provides for you. Right, so up here at the corner of 109 and Manchester Road, kind of near the corner there, you're gonna find a lot of the shopping here in Wildwood, you're going to have uh, Deerberg's, which is a, a big supermarket here in St. Louis. Um, different restaurants, Starbucks, movie theater, um, that kind of stuff. So that's going to be where a lot of your shopping and things are going to be done at uh, here in Wildwood. And so just something like, you know, Manchester Road is a main thoroughfare through the majority of St. Louis County. It goes through a ton of different communities and suburbs. And so just all along uh, Manchester Road, you're going to find different restaurants and shopping and, and things of that nature. Wildwood isn't all just, uh, you know, properties with land and acreage and everything too, though. So there's, there's also your typical, you know, nice subdivisions as well. And so let's, let's drop you, let's drop a pin in here. Just kind of check out a typical Wildwood subdivision here. Down this way. Uh, so there, you know, nice, you're going to find, you know, this subdivision has some newer, you know, newer homes established, but you, you could tell they've been, you know, built pretty recently. Um, but just by the size of some of the trees in the front yards are not too big yet, but they're, you know, established enough. They've probably, these, these neighborhoods have probably been here for about, you know, 15 years or so, maybe something like that. But again, they, these back to woods, it's, it's like a common thing to find in Wildwood. You're not going to have a whole lot of neighborhoods that back to another neighborhood, you know, so where when you're in your backyard, you're staring directly at your neighbors, backyard that's you know right across the fence from you um, a lot of these neighborhoods in wildwood are featuring wooded back yards you know where they back to woods common ground different forestation different preserves different parks that kind of stuff um, so that's one of the big things that i really like about wildwood and it makes me you know just a big big fan so even though these neighborhoods are you know the houses are pretty close like a typical neighborhood it still feels more private than a lot of other neighborhoods just because of the, the nature that they back to woods you know you've got looks like some possibly some like common ground back here as well that makes it feel even bigger um and so that that's one of the reasons that yeah i just i'm a big fan of wildwood and just this whole area out here love it all right so that brings us to number three on the list of the 10 best neighborhoods and suburbs for families in st louis according to niche.com and that is Ladue. So Ladue is very centrally located right in the middle of St. Louis County. And you can tell it's right by Frontenac and also Olivet that we've kind of reviewed earlier, number five and number six on the list. And Ladue is, the, the, the central location is a huge feature and benefit for Ladue. And Ladue is just known, it's going to be known as St. Louis's wealthiest suburb. And whenever people in St. Louis, remember you say Ladue, people think wealth, they think, you know, um, high society, they think, you know, upper class, that kind of thing. And so Ladue is well known for that, like pretty much a lot of the actors, professional athletes, um, 
that call St. Louis home, a lot of them, a great majority of them are going to live in Ladue. Like Joe Buck, I just saw an article recently how he sold, um, him and his wife sold their previous home that was in Ladue and they bought another house in Ladue, kind of upgraded um, within Ladue. And uh, yeah, it's not uncommon at all for the professional athletes that live in town, play for the Blues and Cardinals, uh, that they're gonna live in Ladue. So the main highway that's going to go through Ladue is going to be Highway 64, Highway 40. So pretty much like people in St. Louis call it Highway 40, but I always call it 64 because that's what like the main highway sign is. Um, so just, just so you know, when you come to St. Louis, if you are looking on a map at Highway 64, people call it 40 and you can see the 40 there. But uh, just, just a heads up on, on that. But yeah, so Ladue, there's there are three different country clubs um, in the county of Ladue in the suburbs and you're going to find a mixture of older and newer homes but mainly mainly Ladue is going to have like older more established homes uh, a lot of large homes on large oversized lots um, and so again kind of a common theme that we've been been seeing in other suburbs where the location is really outstanding it's not uncommon at all to see like older homes older ranch style homes people buying those lots and those houses knocking them down but putting brand new custom homes um, on those lots as well Take a look at this view, the satellite view of Ladue. And so just, you can always kind of, as far as St. Louis goes, like St. Louis isn't like California or Florida or Phoenix or places like that, where it's like, you know, pools are super, super common, like in-ground pools. Pretty much in St. Louis, like you're gonna find most in-ground pools, like in more of your like wealthier, uh, nicer neighborhoods. and you can just kind of so like you know when you're flying over St. Louis and flying above St. Louis, you can kind of say like, okay, that's a wealthy neighborhood just because they've got a lot of pools. It sounds sounds silly, but it's really true. Like if you get on Google, Google Maps and look around, like in the areas where you know it's not quite as nice, you're not going to see very many pools. Um, areas like Ladue, you're seeing you know pools pretty much like every other house, you know, in the backyards of these homes. Um, just because Ladue's, it's a great, really nice, wealthy area. And these uh, homeowners can't afford uh, a nice pool, um, the upkeep and the maintenance and everything that comes with it. So um, let's drop, drop in, let's see if we can drop in here just to kind of get a view and a feel for a Ladue neighborhood, really nice house, big lots, big yards. That's what you're gonna see a lot in Ladue. And you can tell, like, see, this is an established neighborhood. Can't really go down that way for some reason. Let's go ahead up this way. Established neighborhood, nice, big, mature trees. You can see a lot of ranch style homes. Ranch style homes are really popular in Ladue as far as the, the older um, homes that have been you know, around for, for years and a few decades. They're gonna mainly be ranch style homes you're gonna find. So you can kind of tell right here, like look, like so this house has been here. These two houses look like they've been here for a while. And this one over here looks like it's a newer construction. Um, you can tell one by the trees in the front yard, those are smaller trees, um, but two, just you can just tell the style of house, that's a newer type of style versus the older classic ranch across the street. Again, newer, definitely newer, newer style house there. So if I had to bet, I'd say that was probably, you know, uh, older ranch style home like that. Previously, the owner came in, bought it, built brand new custom home. Again, brand new custom home. You could, I mean, just, you, it's like night and day. You can just pick them out, you know, they stick out like a sore thumb. And it's not like these, a lot of the ranch style homes that you're going to see, the older homes in Ladue are like, you know, in bad shape or anything. They're just, they're just outdated, you know, they're just out, outdated, um, you know, and people just want bigger, bigger homes. And, you know, obviously square footage, you're, even though the lots are bigger, if you want more square footage without losing a ton of yard, um, you know, and you have a ranch style home, the, the option is to go up. And so people are buying the ranches, they're coming in and putting in, you know, two-story homes, you know, like right here, perfect example, boom and boom. Like which one has more square footage, right? Um, so it's, you know, similar size lot, but you just get a lot more square footage when you go up a story, obviously. And that's what people are doing. It's not uncommon at all to find this and we'll do um, outstanding location, outstanding neighborhood, fantastic schools. Um, in Ladue, and so it's a great option to do that if you have the means and you have the money. All right, that brings us down to number two on the list of the top 10 suburbs for families in St. Louis, according to niche.com, and number two is Clayton. 
So Clayton is going to be located really centrally in the St. Louis County region. And I love Clayton because it's it's kind of a mixture of both worlds. And so I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So Clayton is located right next to Forest Park. So you're going to get a ton of park living if you love, if you love parks. They also have uh, Shaw Park, uh, which is a great park in Clayton. But it's it's like Forest Park has so many different amenities outside of just the park part of it, you know, as far as like the, the walking trails, the biking trails, you know, all the different activities. It's got the zoo, the art museum, the history museum, the Muni, um, golf. I mean, there's a ton of different, you know, fun activities and things to do in Forest Park itself. But then also Clayton is very unique as far as suburbs go, because there's actually like a legit downtown part of Part of Clayton where it's you know there's there's office buildings you know skyscrapers multi you know 20 you know story tall uh buildings in, in downtown Clayton and I'll show you what, what I'm talking about here we'll take a look head down to the street view of uh of downtown Clayton actually let's go into a neighborhood first in Clayton I think this would be a little bit more more fun to kind of show you so Clayton's gonna have a great neighborhoods as well like really beautiful homes um and so this just kind of feels like, you know, I mean, obviously well-established neighborhood, mature trees, that kind of stuff. Um, nice brick homes, a lot of times. Really beautiful architecture, kind of a mixture. It's, it's like, a, it's actually newer construction, that one there. Or maybe they did a complete uh, rehab and they kind of gave it a facelift, but um, just beautiful homes throughout Clayton and especially on the outskirts of the downtown area. Of Clayton and so like this just seems like a typical St. Louis suburb right nice trees nice homes and everything but then like you can see the buildings peeking up behind there and so you come down here and you make a left and go down the street and all of a sudden boom you're in the middle of what kind of feels like a downtown and it's kind of crazy that was literally one block that way where there's a neighborhood and so um you know you come down come down here and it feels like you're in like a, a, metro a metropolis a uh, you got tons of restaurants and uh, shopping along here. And just like I said, the, the big, tall office buildings and condo complexes and things of that nature. Um, but it's, I mean, like, how cool would it be to live back in those neighborhoods where you're a block or two away from all this great shopping, um, very cool restaurants, and just a bustling, you know, area of business activity. Tons of corporate headquarters um, are located in Clayton. A lot of law firms have offices in Clayton, um, just a lot of just different businesses and, and things in general. And there's obviously more and more development going on. And so Clayton is not shrinking, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's actually growing and expanding as far as the business development. Um, more and more businesses are coming to the city of Clayton, um, which is great for residents, great for the schools, you know, as far as tax revenue and all that kind of stuff. So when you can just see the different development that's going on, you know, all around downtown Clayton. And I'm just a big, big fan of the city of Clayton, just for that reason of like, where you get the mixture of, you know, a downtown, like a bustling downtown area, but then you also have like peaceful, quiet communities, um, you know, in, uh, in neighborhoods in Clayton as well. And not to mention the fact, again, that it's right next to um, the, Forest Park, and this is actually Shaw Park. I almost call this Forest Park, but this is Shaw Park here. Um, Shaw Park has a really cool like outdoor ice rink. Um, it's got a swimming pool, sports fields, uh, tennis courts, just tons of different you know trails and everything. The playgrounds, obviously, um, but great activities. It looks like there's a little league team out there playing ball right now. Um, playgrounds, just it's a great, great place to raise a family here in Clayton. Kind of get the best of uh, of, of everything. You know, you got city life, parks. Um, fantastic school school system. There's Clayton High School right there, and uh, it's I, I can't uh, I can't rave enough about the city of Clayton and just being a resident of Clayton. It's a fantastic place to live. All right, so this is going to bring us to number one on the list of the top ten suburbs for families in St. Louis, according to Niche.com. And number one on their list is Oakland, Missouri. So this one is kind of comical to me. Like Oakland is so close to Webster and Kirkwood. It's it's basically a part of Webster and Kirkwood. Um, so Oakland, just, just to give you an idea. So the population of Oakland is 1,713 people. 
and there's a total of 452 households. So, I mean, there, you know, there are some subdivisions that have more than 452 um, households in them. And so I don't know, I don't know why they, they chose to divide Oakland out of like Kirkwood and Webster, um, but they did. And so we're just going to kind of go with it, you know, so again, like it's 0.61 miles. So this is very similar to their list of you know, like Glendale on this list and Warson Woods, who are very similar style and size communities um, right within another little bit larger community. Um, and so it just, it's a little bit comical to me, but let's, let's dive into it anyway, just to show you uh, what Oakland, Missouri looks like. And so here again, here we go. All right, so Kirkwood, Missouri is right here. Webster Groves is right here. And here is Oakland, right sandwiched in between the two of them. And then again, here's Glendale. So really like in my perspective, like they could have like taken all of these and just made this like one community here as far as, you know, taken Oakland, Warson Woods, Glendale and Webster Groves and just made it one big community and throw Kirkwood in there too. Cause it's, it's I mean, it, it's all so similar um, as far as the different fields and stuff of the neighborhoods and it's all right there. Um, I guess maybe I would consider separating Webster and Kirkwood, but lump, lump Glendale and Oakland into one of the two, um, same with Warson Woods. And so it's just kind of similar. It's kind of silly if you ask me, but again, let's just, let's dive into it. Um, so here we are with Oakland and, and, and look at this, this makes it even sillier to me. Like this Westboro Country Club, it literally makes up a fourth of, of Oakland, of the city of Oakland. So you're talking about a fourth of your city is taken up by a country club. So just like as far as the square mileage and square footage, square mileage of a of a community. So it's pretty much at Sappington Road uh, running north to south and 44, Highway 44 running east to west along with then Big Bend kind of borders the, the bottom part of Oakland. So let's dive into some neighborhoods here in Oakland. Perhaps we'll just drive, run into uh, Oakland Avenue. Let's drop down there. So it's not like I'm not a fan of Oakland and like the, the homes and everything. It's a, it's a very nice community, nice houses, nice neighborhoods, you know, quiet community. Uh, but it just it just feels like Webster Groves, feels like Kirkwood, feels like a lot of like those um, areas that it, it's kind of sandwiched in between. And so, uh, you know, if Kirkwood and Webster are the bread, I guess Oakland is the, the peanut butter and jelly here <laughs> in between. So maybe it's the best part. Maybe it's the best part of, uh, of Kirkwood and, and Webster. But it's, you know, so you're going to find smaller ranch style homes. Um, kind of mixed in with, you know, with two-story homes. And so it's not uncommon at all to find different uh, style homes like that within Oakland. And so one thing you're going to want to make sure you keep a lookout for, see that the train tracks right there. And so that's one thing that I always warn people whenever they're looking into areas that have train tracks, just know where the train tracks are in relation to the location of your house. That way, you know, because these houses right here, they probably get some shaken you know with the trains being right across the street you know and so especially if you're going to be relocating to st louis and you're not um that familiar with the area and again that's why you want to reach out to me um so i can kind of help you keep an eye out for for things like that because i you know just just helped a couple move here from dallas um and they pretty much they bought a house that was basically sight unseen like as far as in person like all they saw were when i took them on video tours um going through the property and, and the house and you know, a few different uh, properties that they're looking at, I was able to kind of point out like, hey, this is, this street looks great. Um, the, the street that it's on, it looks really nice. But then I was able to show them on video, um, you know, went out and made a left-hand turn out of their neighborhood, went down a few blocks and the neighborhood turns really quickly as far as just the type of, you know, area it is where it goes from feeling really safe on your street and in the, in, the, in the suburb or subdivision that you're in, but you know, you turn out and turn the wrong way, and all of a sudden it doesn't feel safe anymore. Um, and so they were able to, you know, avoid making a purchase in uh, on a house like that, just because I wanted them to know the, the area and like, you know, like this. I want I want you to know that those train tracks that are going to be, you know, a couple of blocks or you know, a block from your or even a hundred yards, you know, from your house. That's a big, big deal. Um, that you don't want to buy a house and all of a sudden discover that that's the case. So make sure you always look out for that kind of thing. 
And in this, in this case, like there's multiple tracks that kind of cross through Oakland. So yeah, that kind of, that kind of fun, you know, stuff you gotta, you gotta know if you're um, moving into town from out of town, moving into St. Louis from out of town. So reach out to me so I can help you know all that different, different kind of just unique characteristics and different things around St. Louis and about different suburbs and neighborhoods. And so uh, here's Westboro Country Club that we kind of said like, you know, takes up a fourth of Oakland. It's a very nice country club for sure. It looks like in uh, this image, they're doing some work on the greens and things, but yeah, Westboro is really nice. If you're into the country club lifestyle and uh, yeah, Oakland's a really super nice, nice spot, nice place, but very similar to Kirkwood and Webster. If any of those 10 suburbs stood out to you and you want to learn more about it, make sure you give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. That way I can help you learn all about it. And I can also get a better feel for your family, help you guys find the best spot in St. Louis because I want to help you find the perfect house on the perfect street in the perfect neighborhood that's going to meet your family's needs right here in St. Louis. Take care.